Praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. I'm going to start reading here at verse 11. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Beginning at verse 11. And the text reads. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman and Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, sounding with trumpets. And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endure forever, that then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for the word of truth. Impart your divine instructions in our inward parts. And if we have a mind to obey the things that are going to be said today, that we might see the moving of the Holy Ghost come our direction. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want everybody to understand how important it is that the saints of God be on one accord. It's very important that we understand that. Amen. It is something with God that his children be one. Did Jesus pray that? In his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, he said, Father, I pray that they be one even as we are one. And I don't think that most people understand the power of oneness. I don't think they understand that, praise God. Many people expect God to move in a mighty capacity even though they're not lining up with what is written in Scripture. But the Bible teaches us in this text how the priest and the singers and them that played the instruments of music were as one in making one sound in praising God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Now folks, why is that important? I'm going to show you why that's important. Because when the children of God get on one accord, something happens in the atmosphere. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Something happens in the atmosphere. Praise God. Now, folks, listen to this. It's very important that we set the atmosphere. Come on. If you want God to come in the room, if you want the Holy Ghost to come and dwell in the midst of the people of God, then we got to learn how to roll out the red carpet. Come on. Are you hearing me? You got to learn how to roll out the red carpet because we forgot that God is royalty. Look at the natural. You got celebrities. Amen. Got the red carpet laid out for them. People throw down rose petals. Come on. They prep the atmosphere because they look at these people as royalty. Even though they're not royalty, they just flesh and blood. They just somebody that a man is exalted to the status of Godhood. When you 
Come on. You got to praise him. Like you ain't never praised him. If you expect for his glory to come on the scene. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Now let me share this with you. The Bible says in verse 11 that the priest will come out of the holy place. Now in the Old Testament tabernacle, there were three pieces of furniture in the Old Testament tabernacle. There were three pieces of furniture in the holy place. Now the tabernacle had two rooms. It had, there was a holy place where there were three pieces of furniture. And then beyond the veil, there was the holies of holy where there was the mercy seat. And the mercy seat was the typology of the throne of God. Hallelujah. But the Bible said when the priest came out the holy place. Let me tell you something, folks. This is why it's so important that you have a prayer life. Uh-huh. This is why it's so important that you have a prayer life. Let me tell you something. You can praise God all day long, but if you don't pray, God still ain't going to answer. Because I've seen some people, they like to just move and jump. Amen. And play an instrument and, and sing and do all of those formalities. But have you noticed they don't have a prayer life? Let me tell you something. You can't just praise God and not have a prayer life and think the fire of God is going to spark the room. Let me tell you something. Having a prayer life and a praise life is like rubbing two sticks together. How many know when you rub two sticks together? Look, they just sit in the chair. 
church like God is nothing. Hello? But then they try to sell you a lie to try to make you believe they down with God. And the truth is, they're not down with God. And they don't believe in Jesus. That's why they ain't received salvation. Amen. Come on. Because how many know when you believe on Jesus, he said, out of your belly shall be a river of living water. This may keep up the Holy Ghost. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody. Oh, 
praise God. I'm talking about the beloved. Get no one accord with God according to that which is written in his word. The Bible said they were all together in one place. They was on one accord. Now I wonder what they were doing when they was in that upper room. You want me to tell you what they were doing? They were fasting and they were praying. They were seeking God. They were encouraging one another. They were praising God in the temple. That's what they were doing. Come on. Hallelujah. And you know what the Bible says? It says that suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Did you see that? Did you see that? Now we can go back to Second Chronicles chapter 5, 11 through 14. You see they were doing the same thing. Amen. They were on one accord. Come on. They were, come on. The priest had just came out of the holy place. Come on. When they came out of the holy place, they gathered with the singers and did they play the instruments of music. And they began to praise God on one
But divided we fall. Amen. That's why he's going to keep you divided. Yep. That's why he's going to keep husbands and wives at odds against each other. Yep. Because husbands and wives don't understand the power of oneness. Yep. Come on. Didn't he say in Deuteronomy how one saint can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand devils to flight? Yep. But if he can keep you divided, he can gain an advantage. And the devil will keep you at odds with one another. Keep something going on in your marriage. Keep something going on in the church. Something going on all the time. Come on. When, when problems arise, we're supposed to nip them in the bud. Because we don't want nothing to keep us from being separated from each other. We don't want nothing to separate us from the love. 